the the last thing I was going to remind folks, there we go. Now we're recording. The last thing I was going to remind folks, please, is um, knowing that this is a highly public session, please don't reveal anything about um, your child or perhaps someone else's that you wouldn't want other folks to know. That may be obvious to folks, but sometimes people forget. So here we go. First question is, hello, is the plan for teachers to cover the quote normal amount of material? And if so, how are you planning to supplement the in-person instruction? Um, I'm going to hit each of our building principles for this answer because it, you know, it seems applicable at all levels. And why don't I begin, uh, Ms. Miller, with you. Thank you. We do plan on making the classes and the curriculum very similar. We are hoping that it will be seamless. We would like all of our children to receive the same education, whether they are online or in person. Our teachers all plan together. So the online teacher is part of the same planning with the teachers who are in school with your children. And we believe that they'll be able to manage the curriculum, whether they are online or in person. We have supports in place uh, to help children in either venue. Thanks, Ms. Miller. Um, Mr. Shritai. Uh, I can attest to um, having seen many of our teachers in department meetings uh, this week, uh, mapping out their scope and sequence for the year, um, and really taking a deep look at uh, Ohio's curricular standards. Um, and just to get a little in the weeds, uh, just as an example, our teachers um, acknowledge that um, the depth to which they might cover standards um, might be shallower than in years past. So just as an example, if um, the Ohio biology standards demands that our students learn genetics and complete uh, single hybrid crosses in a Punnett square, you know, in years past, uh, our, our biology teacher may have taken that a little deeper and taught them dihybrid crosses. Um, and so this is, this is potentially the year where we might scale back in terms of the, the acceleration of content. However, uh, we do want to provide those opportunities for the students that are, are ready and willing. So we might look at, say, a, a, a half day of, of online instruction live and in person for our students, but then supplement the rest of their day uh, with some of those extension activities. Thank you. I think you were showing off a little bit there. Let's be honest. Former Mr. science Chase. teacher, I'm sorry. <laughs> So I'll, I'll actually use the English example soon. Um, but anyways, uh, as well, uh, the high school was working on scope and sequence. It was actually the very first uh, day of the week. We focused on scope and sequence. And we went back to uh, what are called power standards. Um, when I first started in education, this was a very popular term uh, back in the late 90s, early 2000. And looking at, like, like uh, Mr. Shritai said, looking at the scope and sequence of Ohio standards and determining um, the amount we are covered for certain standards versus the possibility of cutting back here and there on other standards. But let me give you one example. Um, you know, the standard of uh, in, in ELA claim evidence and reason um, starts around third and fourth grade. It's continued um, changing sort of the adjectives and description in the state standards all the way up to 12th grade. But knowing that that standard is repeated over and over again, it's critically important to um, persuasive uh, writing and analytical writing in that, that would be a standard that the English department, you know, would use as a power standard. So um, this was a job of the teachers, uh, not only Monday and Tuesday, but this entire week to sort of look at where the power standards are and determine um, the effort and time going into certain standards where um, other standards will be presented in a different way. But they'll all be covered in some sort of way, um, just more in, some in more depth than others. Thanks. Um, and uh, just offer out there, if any of the other administrators want to jump in, um, feel free at any point. I'll keep going. All right, so the next question is, are the schedules on Infinite Campus, the online schedules our students will follow, regardless of whether they originally chose online or in person? I think the simple answer is yes. Yes, that is accurate. Uh, you... I, I would like, uh, Bob, I'd like to give one clarification. Yep. So uh, in Infinite Campus, the schedule does remain the same. Uh, there's a timestamp for original schedules based off a of period of time in Infinite Campus that cannot be changed. So, for example, the high school, if you see first, second, third, 
four, five, five, six period, you follow the schedule I sent out. Um, there is some confusion, I think, in each building because um, there might be a time that says first period runs from this time to that time. Second period runs this time, this time. It's something we can't change in the master schedule, um, especially if we come back full time in person. So long story short, with the schedule you see in Infinite Campus is you just match up first period to the first period time that you see A to L or M to Z um, on the high school schedule. It's been released, released for about um, six weeks now. Next question, can you please explain how um, the health call, which I, I think means the online health class for the high school, uh, works for ninth graders. If it's an afternoon, if this is for an afternoon student, um, do they need to sign in for a morning session? Sounded like there's a choice of a couple times to sign in. Do they need to sign in for the same sessions each week? So uh, the health class is completely online um, the entire school year. So the best way I can explain this is there's two sections of health. Um, Mr. Creel sent out invites to students, in, in the, and if he hasn't done so already, he's doing so in the next day or so. So for example, um, your student may be invited to a third period health class. Now you might say, well, my, my son or daughter has third period in the morning. Well, that means that you know, Mr. Creel will look at, you know, if you have an A to L last name, yeah, you're invited to the afternoon health class because you will not have a class in the afternoon during third period. Um, I cannot put both classes during third period because you can't overlap them in the schedule. So on the schedule, the health class will show up as in academy or 11th period, but you will be invited to a time that when you don't have another class, it's either during third period or six, seven period, morning or afternoon, based off of where your name's at. Um, you would go in that class the same as any other time, twice a week, on the opposite side of the schedule when you weren't actually in session. Um, it sounds confusing, and I'm not expecting it to be perfect for everyone on day one, but by day two or three, it'll be absolutely perfect. Um, we know, you know, if, if your student is confused or they make it to the wrong session, they'll be told which which session to join. Um, after the first couple of days, but it will work out very smoothly after they move through it. Okay, next question. Hello all, thanks for having this forum for us. You're welcome. My question is this, since January, there have been a total of six deaths in Cuyahoga County in anyone under 40. In addition, our president, Dr. Fauci, and the CDC have indicated that our children should be back in school full time. Why are we continuing with remote learning? Those of us with kids on 504s or IEPs are seeing our kids suffering. Those uh, not on special accommodations are also dealing with serious social and emotional issues. Um, uh, agreed. Uh, I think that if you, um, so what I would offer is this, um, be many of our, many of our students um, live with people who are over 40 um, and interact with folks who are over 40. Our staff, many are over 40, not me, but many are. And um, the, uh, just kidding. So, uh, we've we've taken a much broader look at this, of course, and the um, and and our our thoughts are the following. We've been following the Cuyahoga County Board of uh, Board of Health's recommendation. Uh, they, you know, went with the spike in July uh, of um, with virus spread, uh, increased positivity rates, et cetera, um, that led them to their recommendation. We followed it. Um, we are, as I I guess, as I led off with the meeting, we are, however, watching a very positive trend. And our hope is that um, if that trend continues for a few more weeks, that we will feel the confidence um, uh, in you know in all the systems around us that are intended to support um, to support our community. If and when um, any of us should become um, COVID positive, if uh, if if that um, capacity is there, then we feel that we're ready to go back to school. We're confident in what we're going to be able to do within our buildings. That's never been in doubt. But what we can't control is everything that's around us and the capacity of um, hospital systems and the, and the Board of Health to handle a huge spike in um, virus spread. We don't want to contribute to that. And we also want to make sure we're taking care of our community. So it's been a very difficult balancing act. Um, I hope you hear in my voice. I hope you've heard in some of the things we're looking at for school. Our priority is to work with kids in person as well. Uh, but we're just trying to balance this against very real concerns. Um, but I, I appreciate your comments and the, the thought behind them. Um, we're hoping for the same thing.
Uh, next, next question is not, neither of my kids are able to access their Beachwood Schools Gmail account. They are using their credentials from last year, but are receiving a page that states their account is blocked. Dr. Vienna, is that, um, is that happening to, uh, are you aware of that happening? And if not, what should no. Ms. Howard do? Um, so two things, you could email me, um, or, uh, which is kev at beachwoodschools.org, or, um, the faster way to go would be, um, email direct to service desk at beachwoodschools.org. Um, Jason and Vitas, our tech guys, uh, will get it immediately. And instead of you waiting for, you know, send it to me and then I send it to them and then they get it. Um, you can send it directly to service desk at beachwoodschools.org and they'll reset the account. I just dropped that email in case it was um, unclear in any way into the chats for those who, um, uh, who, who, uh, uh, have a tech issue they want to uh, email the service desk about. Okay, for computer or textbook drop-offs at the village, is there a specific time and place to meet the bus? Um, let's see, Ms. Legalbo or Dr. Vian, do you, uh, do you know specifically what might be happening at the village in terms of drop-offs there? Yes, there was an email that was sent out uh, this afternoon around four or five o'clock. Uh, the village drop off. If it's a high school, it's going to be nine a.m. If it's Hilltop, twelve thirty p.m. And if it's at a Bryden uh, drop off, it is at noon. Um, and we cannot enter the buses. Cannot enter the village, so it will be at the bus stop outside the gate for the village. Thank you. Is there consideration to allow students in middle school to be able to set up Google Meet to allow them to collaborate with classmates on schoolwork or social or social interactions? Uh, Dr. Vian, do you want to speak to Google Meet? I think the answer is yes and no. What do you think? Um, so they they uh, yeah there there's an opportunity for them to use the chat features and. Uh, um, and use Google Meet, um, we can allow that for, for students to interact with one another. Um, and I think it goes back, Bob, we skipped the question, so. Um, I'm sorry, I'll go back to it. No, that's okay, because it has to do sort of with the same thing. We, we want to give students um, the most opportunities to interact with one another, um, but in a way that is, um, you know, appropriate for school material and, you know, I'm a software and things like that. So. Um, but using Google Meet is uh, is easy enough through their Gmail, um, and so um, we'll allow it. Is that just asking, Ken? Is that something we have to proactively, essentially, you know, flip a toggle switch on to allow for students, or is it something that's there right now for certain age groups? So, so I thought it was on for middle school, um, but I'll check the settings to see if it got switched for some reason. Um, th there have been times when uh, teachers have asked during the year that, you know, chat features are turned off or, you know, ability to, uh, um, you know, virtually chat and that with their friends, um, uh, especially at the middle school. Uh, but I remember over the spring, we, uh, we turned it on, you know, we allowed it. And then um, and, unless someone changed it without me knowing, but we'll check the settings today. I have a feeling the question is for a rising sixth grader who just may not have known it was uh, cap uh, capable, a capability yet. Okay, sorry I missed the question before. Where in the Hilltop schedule is the time for children to see and speak to friends who are not in their classroom? Recess and lunch says it's offline. That is correct, that it is offline, but not five days a week. We want the kids to be able to eat together from different classrooms. So we do plan on having some signups for children on different days of the week to eat with children to create a new uh, pod, let's say, for them to have lunch. We also plan on having some classes have some experiences together that they will do together across uh, different classrooms. So they will have that opportunity. But I would like to say that there will be some days at lunch that we just want to take the kids off the screen for a little while and have that break from sitting in front of a screen and get up and move around and have a real time for some movement and a break from being in front of the computer. Uh, Mr. Shritai, how can a family know their child's schedule? Uh, schedules are now live in Infinite Campus. 
And um, as, as Mr. Chase alluded to, you'll just have to sort of cross-reference what's an infinite campus versus the online schedule that's been emailed previously. It's also available on our website. I can drop it into the chat bar. Um, the B latest edition of the BMS e-news, actually the most recent two editions, uh, detailed schedules and what specifics of those that had signed up for remote-only learning through January 15th versus the ones that had uh, initially intended to attend in person. Uh, so I do want to make that distinction. Uh, schedules are an infinite campus, and you'll just have to cross-reference periods one through nine uh, and sort of interface that with the, the, the bell schedule that has been posted. I'd like to just add one thing with the high school as well. Um, I had this question. In my uh, most recent BHS news, students will be uh, receiving Google Classroom invites between Wednesday, which is today, right, and Friday. Um, from their teachers, so that will allow them to log in uh, immediately uh, on Monday morning from each of their Google Classrooms. So, so they, your your children in the high school should be checking their emails for um, Google Classroom invites, and inside that Google Classroom, we'll have the first link to the Google Hangout for day number one. And that that goes. Uh, just the same for the middle school, although we'll have it assigned by grade level, where each grade level team will email out um, sort of a list of seventh grade teachers. And here are each of the Google Meet links, where to go for first period, second period, and so on. Okay, next question. Can you explain why the elementary online-only classes are so large? I do not want to hear the party line of smaller classes for everyone else because of the need uh, for six-foot distancing. You just spoke of equity yet you are punishing the parents who chose to do online due to safety concerns by shoving as many kids in a class as possible. Where is the equity in that? I pay the same taxes as the other parents and expect the same small classes that Beachwood is known for. Um, well, let me begin by just being honest. The party line is the party line because it's the truth. Um, we have to prioritize at school, um, six foot distancing, or we're not gonna be able to bring students into the school building. We already uh, we added staff this year um, in order to accommodate those um, those class sizes at school. Um, and uh, in addition, we reassigned I don't know probably almost ten teachers from across the district who aren't going to be doing what they normally do. So in many ways, Beachwood is changing this year um, from what for us is typical or normal. And so um, that is how we're providing equity. We're providing equity in the sense of we are trying to meet the needs, uh, in this case, health and safety needs we never would have considered in previous years um, in order for kids to be in school. Um, we don't want any of our online um, students or families to feel punished. And, I'm, and you know, I, I'm sorry that that's how it feels. Um, I will turn things over to Sherry uh, Miller. Maybe you can speak a little bit to, um, I, I don't think we have shoved students into online. And, um, and just to, to, to lead you off a little bit, I do know that um, we are keeping an eye on those numbers. Um, there's no magic number for the size of an online class, but um, using common sense, if we hit a point where our online classes um, are very large and, um, and the in-school classes perhaps are um, manageably very small, then we'll make an adjustment. Um, but we do have to get to the start of our school year. Um, we still have students enrolling in school um, uh, every single day. We have new students enrolling, and we probably will continue to over the next few weeks if um, other years are a good guidance for this year. So we have to we have to get to some sort of kind of equilibrium and really understand um, where our kids are, what parents are choosing, uh, before we make adjustments that could have negative ripple effects. But um, Ms. Miller, will you offer perhaps some other information that helps answer the question? Mm -hmm. I'd like you to be reassured that we do, will not put large groups of children together for their um, main learning. We are going to break the children up into groupings because we want them to get the exact same attention whether they were in school or online for their instruction. So we will be grouping children in different ways throughout a day. And there will be times when children will be in small groups of two to three children with the teacher. And at times they may be working on something together and the teacher will pop in and out out of that Google chat. There are times that the teacher will have the entire class broken up, let's say into two or three groups 
where she or he would do a mini lesson and give them instruction in that way and then further go into smaller groupings again so that the children can receive instruction at their levels. So we plan on using multiple and flexible ways to group children because we do understand that those larger groups would benefit from the small group instruction and opportunities to practice what they are learning in smaller groups. And the teachers will be monitoring that very closely. We have been keeping Dr. Hardis and Dr. Vian aware of our class sizes. And at this point, we have worked with all of the teachers who are online to be sure that they have a really solid schedule planned and understandings of the different ways to use groupings. And it's not unlike what we do in a classroom when we are in person and we do different learning centers or learning stations, and it provides children with multiple opportunities for their learning. So I understand where your concern is, but we have addressed it in the same way we would if we were together in a classroom. Thank you. Uh, Bob, right, I'd like, Bob, I'd ahead, like to add too, in addition to that, um, and, and not to go on and elaborate too much further, but uh, just another, another point of reassurance that the same kind of care has gone into this thinking, um, including the class sizes, for the, um, the need for the additional support staff that would support the online classes as well, because we know that that's critical, whether the kids are in school or out. So we, we have staff that will, the intervention staff will be supporting and co-teaching in those classes. We'll be able to provide um, ind individual support and in small groups within the large group for students that may be different learners within that group. So even though the classes are large, we're still keeping in mind the different needs even within that group, um, including students that are English second language and need that support. So we've, we've really been purposeful in that so that that aspect of equity certainly can be seen in the online classes as well as the others. Uh, thanks, Lauren. I appreciate that you added that. Uh, it's important. Okay, next question. Will you be prorating preschool payments while it is online? The answer is no. Um, and, and I'll turn to you in a moment, Ms. Miller, if you want to, if you want to add to this. Uh, just, just two responses. One is our hope is we won't be online for very long. But number two, um, we, haven't, uh, we haven't reduced any of our staffing um, levels or anything else at the preschool so that we can hopefully run a very um, robust online program for whatever period of time that is. And uh, so, um, so, so no, we did not uh, intend to prorate. Anything to add? Okay. Uh, while we have signed up for sending our kid back to school, we are also seeing in the news regularly that most places which have opened have seen a sudden surge of cases. Hope the decision to get back to school is taken weighing all the options and keeping in mind the safety of students and staff. Um, yes, <laughs> we will. Um, we, we will not go back to school just based on, I don't know, um, what other school districts do or don't do or uh, public pressure. Uh, but but um, I hope I've you know, made clear over the weeks that we're watching um, the data that the Board of Health and our county is collecting. We're looking for trends, and we um, and we're taking into account the many variables that that go into this. And again, one more time, we're also very confident, given a number of things, given the um, size of our school system, uh, quite uh, right down to the layout of our buildings and how our plan um, kind of leverages all of the advantages that we have in Beechwood and the resources we have. And then finally, um, we're also relying on our community. Um, to be um, to be smart, to be cautious, to be um, mindful of one another's safety, and with all of those things in mind, when the right time comes, um, we will um, we'll make that call uh, to bring the kids back. And I just want to put out there by having an online option, we always leave open um, the option for any family to make a different choice um, and and keep their kids in the on in an online program. Okay. Are the middle school teachers uh, the same in school if we return as they are for the all virtual classes? The answer is yes. Correct, Mr. Shritai? Yes, you are following, your child will follow um, his or her same uh, schedule and, um, and with the same teachers uh, while we're remote and once we return. We are trying to have the most seamless transition uh, back to school. And if it's unfortunate and we have to go remote again, 
we want it to be a seamless a transition back to remote learning also. Hopefully that won't happen. The next question is, following up on the ab above question, is there consideration given to going back to school in person a little time, even if the county level goes down to orange, so we can see how other schools going back in person in other counties are doing? I would hate to see our students go back to school for a week and then have school closed again due to sudden surge and spread. That would be very disruptive. Um, agreed, uh, but frankly, we, we, again, to come back to it, we feel that we've built a plan um, that is, um, again, leverages all of our resources to maintain the safest environment we can. And um, frankly, going back uh, just for a little time, I think would probably be fairly disruptive both to our teachers, the students, and perhaps to family schedules as well. So we want to give people something they can rely upon, schedule based upon. And, um, and so when we do go back in person, it will be, um, it will be based on the plan that, um, again, a lot of different uh, folks, a lot of experts weighed in on and that the community um, supported. And I hope to do that as soon as possible. Um, okay. The question is, why is the health class online for the entire year? Uh, Mr. Chase. Sure. Um, so there's there's a couple reasons. Um, first, with the, the schedule that we're currently in, this system allowed uh, many more students to uh, be able to take health and fit it into their schedule. Um, that's number one. Uh, it allowed teacher flexibility in the schedule to be able to support students in health and PE. Uh, the other thing is I, I, I would like to really consider looking at health um, both as an in-person online option in the future. Uh, over the summer, we have been using um, a VLA course that uh, Mr. Patty sends out for juniors and seniors each year. Um, that is an online health course um, for students who want to sort of get ahead. And, and it's obviously paid for at that point by the parents. But um, because that model works so well, um, I felt like this is a good time to be creative. Uh, make sure I can get as many students in the health this year that want to um, make sure they have it for their graduation credit. And this seemed to be the per perfect time to build a, a possible online option for the future and um, go from there. Okay, next question. Can you explain the logistics for tomorrow? Will the bus drivers be coming to our doors? Is there a way to do a contactless uh, drop off? Um, so yes, bus drivers will be coming to the doors. Uh, we are not going to leave um, textbooks and Chromebooks um, at um, homes that uh, don't have someone who um, comes to the door. So um, maybe Ms. Legabo, I, you know some of the details about how the drivers are handling um, the materials, what precautions they are, they are taking as they drop materials off. Would you just offer a little bit of information about that? And then as, right before you do, I would just say um, to any parent that is uncomfortable with this, um, let us know and we, we can work out an alternative for you. Yes, yeah, so the, the, the drivers at the will go to the doors and ring the bells or knock on the bells. Uh, they will put the package on the stoop, back up six feet, and we want to make sure that somebody is there to uh, receive the package. Um, so if nobody is there to receive the package, we will collect the package and return it back to to try it again for Friday. We will do uh, attempt two deliveries. Any packages that are not picked up or are, are, are undeliverable will be returned either to the high school. If you're a high school student, all other buildings will be returned to the Board of Education office. Of course, we're going to be, uh, our drivers have hand sanitizer. They are going to be washing their hands frequently when handling the packages, ringing doorbells, knocking on doors. Um, those good hygiene practices that we will be um, ensuring that the drivers have the ability to wash their hands frequently while on these routes. Uh, the driver, I should say, we do have a couple drivers on each bus, so one person's driving, and then there's a couple people that are going to be delivering the packages on the street so that we can do this as quickly and efficiently as we can. Thank you. All right, Mr. Shrita, you won the fastest typing um, award. You beat Linda and then me. I got the bronze medal for writing the email slowest of the three of you. But service desk at beachwoodschools.org is um, who you should write to if you have um, you or your child has a technology issue, say with our Chromebook or an access to an account, et cetera. And as uh, Dr. Bion said earlier, 
you will get uh, receive the fastest service by writing to them. Okay, next question. If and when we have in-person school, is there a plan for what will happen if someone tests positive for COVID-19, either a child or an adult? Will just that child or teacher have to quarantine the entire class, that bus, or the entire school? Also, will the school have access to a contact tracer if positive cases occur? So uh, to answer the last question first, contact tracing occurs through the Cuyahoga County Board of Health. We work with them uh, and they will, uh, they will do contact tracing. I understand if, um, if uh, I have heard that if they have an overwhelming number, then they will turn to the school district and ask us to, um, to do some of the work of gathering that information for them as they uh, do contact tracing. But, um, but it, is, it is their job and they support us in doing that. So the, the first part's a great question. Um, we've been asked that by many folks and the answer uh, really differs uh, based on all of the specifics of the situation. And so first and foremost, what I can tell you is if we learn that someone has tested positive, um, either a child or an adult, whether that be from them themselves, or we learn that from the Board of Health um, because they um, constantly receive that data from uh, doctors, hospitals, et cetera, um, when there is a positive uh, case, we, um, we rely on the Board of Health to, um, to tell us the procedures for what to do. We've had this situation over the past several months uh, with um, uh, staff and with students, and thankfully all uh, ending up okay. Uh, but in those situations, so these sort of trial runs, if you will, with the Board of Health, they have typically asked us um, for some very detailed information about the type of interactions that the, um, the student or the adult had. And so um, what I have um, learned, I guess, over time in these you know, four, five, six cases working with them um, is the following. They want to know um, were the interactions that occurred between the person who turned out to be COVID positive and other people, did they occur um, within six feet of one another? Were those interactions um, the duration of 10 to 15 minutes long? And were they wearing a mask at that time? Uh, in every, again, and I am not professing to be uh, an expert on the Board of Health or how they would handle any other given situation. I can only speak to these anecdotal experiences that we've had. In every one of those cases, if all of those um, sort of tests were satisfied, no one but the COVID positive person had to quarantine in terms of these interactions at school. So again, it really speaks to our need to um, live by our rules. Wear a mask, keep it on, don't slide, don't, don't um, let it, you know, don't get lax about it. Maintain distancing and, um, and, uh, and, you know, if you've done that, your interactions with people can be as long as you want them to be. But, um, there were some um, very quick and incidental uh, interactions that occurred um, either closer together or with someone with a mask pulled down. And if they were um, just a very brief encounter, once again, other folks did not need to um, quarantine. And none of them turned out to be positive later. So I would say the Board of Health made the right call. Uh, just one other piece of information, again, from what we've been learning through experience over the last several months, um, when the Board of Health wants to, um, is contact tracing, one of the other things they um, are asking, um, either of us or of the people directly, is um, they're very interested in um, all interactions that occurred from um, within two days prior to a person becoming symptomatic. So that's this key sort of period of time where someone's asymptomatic, where they believe they're still spread, chance of spread, and then obviously once someone is symptomatic, there, there's chance of spread then as well. So, um, so they're also asking questions about the date. When did someone become symptomatic? Who did they interact with for the 48 hours prior to that and any time afterward? Um, so um, I think it's a when, not an if. When we have um, possible exposures or an actual COVID positive um, child or staff member, this is exactly what we will do for the Board of Health. We will obtain this information, um, we will provide it to them, and they will give us guidance about who needs to be notified, who needs to be quarantined, and for how long. And uh, just the last piece, then I'll be quiet. Um, the, it, 
in all of these situations, um, it it I feel very confident that if um, if if when we return to school in person, if our staff and our students hold to the um, the plan and the rules and the precautions that we have set up, and I know that they will, um, that these um, that it would be highly unlikely that we would ever have um, even an entire class need to quarantine um, from a COVID positive person being in that room. Um, it is unimaginable to me that we would ever have to shut down the entire school uh, based on having a COVID positive person who happened to be in the building at any one time. So again, we are going to be um, reiterating, reinforcing, repeating our rules um, and making sure that everyone takes them very seriously because that is the best way we can stay safe. Bob, just sorry to interrupt, but can you also comment on the um, responsive, responsiveness of the uh, Board of Health, how quickly they respond to us? And you know, I don't want anyone to think that that if this happens, that it's going to be two, three, five, six days before they get answers of what we're supposed to do. I just want I want to know how well they work with us and how quickly they have been so far to this point been responding. Sure. I can just say from firsthand experience, they're awesome. Uh, the people at the Board of Health are incredibly responsive. And what I've um, really appreciate, uh, what I've most appreciated beyond the responsiveness is when we bring a situation to them, um, sometimes even very convoluted ones about, you know, this kid went to a practice, but his cousin, this, who was at his uncle's house, these things that we have brought to them, what we receive back is crystal clear procedures and instructions for what to do. And in a world right now where I feel like everything is murky, do what you feel is right, local decision, local decision. It is nice sometimes to just get, uh, to just be told exactly what to do um, in very clear and uncertain terms. And that's what they've been providing to us and it's, it is very appreciated. So, um, uh, Mr. Shrita, I got it. You offered the link to middle school schedules. Next, my middle school student has two classes listed for a few periods during the day. How do we know which uh, periods uh, he's supposed to go to? And I apologize for the confusion. As Mr. Chase referenced previously, we had to build our hybrid, our hybrid schedule in the confines of our learning management system. So Infinite Campus has a nine period day and we had to build out a hybrid schedule within that. Um, uh, for our teachers, um, for example, on Monday, they teach periods one through four in the morning, and again, one through four in the afternoon. So every online student schedule, if there is overlap there, uh, right next to the course name, there should be either online A or online B. So just to use first period as an example, first period meets Monday morning at 8.05. It also meets Monday afternoon at 12.30. Uh, for any class that is listed as online A, that is the morning period section. So if it's first period online A, uh, that student should refer to the, their first period class at 8.05. It's a, if it's first period online B, that class is scheduled for 12.30. And there is a very confusing spreadsheet that we put together for each grade level that lists all of those offering when the class is meeting. Um, I will again drop that into the chat as well. Uh, if any parent or student has confusion around um, when their classes are meeting, I encourage them to reach out. But that is the distinction. Uh, periods, um, online periods A will meet in the morning, online periods B will meet in the afternoon. Uh, another, uh, another middle school question. Uh, middle school online only students are in, are in morning and afternoon classes. Middle school in-person students are half day only, even while we are online at the beginning of the year. How will they all be getting the same education? Uh, they will be getting the same education. They uh, are meeting for the same instructional minutes, regardless of whether they are in person or remote. Um, so to use my last example, for an online only student, we had to cobble together a schedule that matched up our, our remote learning students and their availability with the availability of our teachers. So yes, online students could very well be in classes throughout the day. Um, they might have a first period class that meets at 8.05 um, and another class that meets ninth period in the afternoon at, at 2.30 um, with potentially gaps in between. Uh, just one other example that I, that I often share is orchestra meets on um, 
excuse me, excuse me, Mondays and Thursdays, band meets on Tuesdays and Fridays. So depending on what music class you might have, I've seen some online student schedules where they might have five classes that meet on Monday and only three classes that meet on Tuesday. Um, and again, and that's just a byproduct of the hybrid schedule that we had to create for our remote learners. Okay, next question. You are not being honest here. I don't agree with you. And I, if you were talking about me, I don't appreciate it. You have, I've been honest the entire time with our answer earlier about class sizes and so was Ms. Miller. I'm gonna read your question anyway. My child's teacher has 23 students in her class and the families I have spoken to only have, who are in person, only have uh, 12 to 14 students. That is almost double. How do you expect her teacher to be as effective as someone that only has 12 children? You need to break it up. It is simply not right and you know it. Um, I just wanna refer back to what Ms. Miller offered, a very detailed answer about how our um, teachers will handle um, the online classes, uh, dividing students up into groups, et cetera. Um, but I want to address this idea that I've been dishonest. Um, I don't know who promised you uh, online classes of the same size as in-person, um, but I don't think anyone did. So um, yes, online classes sit at probably around 23 students, maybe some are around 20, maybe some are at 25 right now. Um, that is going to be different than our in-school classes. We have never promised that they will be the same size, nor have we promised that they will look or run exactly the same. They cannot. However, what we can assure you is we have excellent teachers who will be running those classes. They will run them in ways that are going to be creative and different in order to ensure that the kids get a great education and your daughter will as well. Um, I feel as though you, you, you must have a, you know, a lot of concerns about the online environment. Let me please just encourage you to reach out directly to Ms. Miller um, uh, outside of this, um, this environment and maybe delve deeper into exactly what this will look like. I, I am hopeful that you will feel uh, better about what that environment will look like and, um, and, uh, and that it, you know, it won't be as... Um, uh, that you'll feel more positive about it after a conversation with Ms. Miller. Uh, next good. question. Go I ahead, Sherry. I'm sorry. An opportunity for us to meet, and I'd love to meet face to face, maybe you know, with a Google Meet, so we can really walk through what the day looks like and feels like, and that you have maybe a better picture because I want you to feel reassured. Next question is: Will we get the extracurricular info as the school year progresses? Um, if the question is regarding, um, uh, well, yes, I think the easy answer is yes. Keep a lookout for all kinds of extracurricular info uh, coming soon. Number one, for clubs, uh, many of them will meet, um, will meet online. Um, those that are conducive to virtual meetings, uh, those are going to start. And, um, and uh, I, well, I don't know if, Radha, you're, the, you're actually on the uh, meet. So welcome. Thank you for a uh, student being interested or whether you logged on for your parents, which I know is also happening. Um, but uh, you will be able to see, uh, you, will, you will see, I'm sorry, invitations to, um, to opening meetings of various clubs. And if the question was related to sports, similarly, just look for communications about um, how, any, how and where and uh, any of the clubs and sports will be meeting. Um, and again, going back to what I said previously, hopefully this is sooner, much sooner rather than later. Okay, how, how can we know if we're in group one or group two at uh, the middle school or group A and B? My son's account is blocked, so we are not able to see, receive emails with details. Um, it is based on last name. A through L is in group, I don't know if we're calling it one or, or yeah, one, not A. So A through L is group one, and um, uh, M through Z is group two. And um, uh, reach out, to, please, to service desk at beachwoodschools.org so we can troubleshoot why the account is blocked. Um, it's a, the next one is a thank you for uh, the delivering of textbooks, Chromebooks. Um, thank you. Yeah. Um, I hope it all goes well in the next couple days and uh, everyone feels uh, better prepared for the following week. Are there any updates about fall sports based on the governor's decision yesterday? Um, I wouldn't say that any of our update is based on the governor's decision. Um, his decision to um, allow contact sports 
to, um, to now proceed um, really doesn't change um, what was the o overall uh, that uh, non-contact sports have been, um, have been al allowed to proceed, if you will. Um, again, it's not a mandate, it's just what's allowable uh, by the state for, I guess, almost a month now. And then they lifted that, um, the ban on contact sports actually going into scrimmages and then competition. Um, so for us, our decision-making has been um, more localized. We're looking at the data around Cuyahoga County and the fact that the Board of Health um, saw over the summer that virus spread was related to sports activity, among many other things. However, uh, we are watching, again, the same thing again. We're watching this data. We're seeing positive signs that we will be able to return to school in person sooner rather than later, and we'll apply the exact same uh, criteria to sports. I'm hopeful that fall sports um, will be able to commence, commence safely, and that students will be able to um, salvage a good portion of their fall season. And that's, uh, but we're working on it, we're watching, and hopefully this is something we'll be able to um, feel confident in starting soon. Following up on the question above, uh, clarify for the high school, what, uh, what they should do for the four, five, five, six, six, seven, and seven, eight blocks when, the, um, when they have different classes for each individual block. So the example is if English is a five, six, math is seven, eight, what are they supposed to do for the Tuesday schedule which shows six, seven, and seven, eight. Are they taking both English and math during this time? Mr. Chase, please answer sure. in okay. Greek because that's how I'm gonna understand okay. this. <laughs> All right, so four, five, and five, six occur on Monday and Thursday. Um, and Tuesday and Friday, you have six, seven, seven, eight. Um, just about pretty much everybody in the school cannot take a four, five, and five, six together because in a typical schedule, they overlap. So you would not ever have those two classes together and you would never have six, seven, seven, eight together because the seven part of six, seven goes into seven, eight and the five part of four, five goes into five, six. So that conflict sounds crazy, but it doesn't exist. Um, you, 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 so no one's gonna have a four, five and a five, six. No one's gonna have a six, seven, and seven, eight. So they're gonna be on and those are already separated by separate days. Um, the one exception to that rule, um, we do have a, a, a AP biology class that um, runs five, six, seven, and um, there are a handful of students that I'm working through their schedule, and Mr. Later and I have come up with a couple of alternatives as well as moving the schedule around, but you know, that is the only exception to school that would ever have a conflict there, and we are almost have all those problems solved. Thank you. All right, next question. It's probably too early to ask, but do we have any update on last year's sixth grade Hiram House camp, which was rescheduled for October 2020? It looks like it will not happen this October as well. That is correct. Mr. Shvitai, do you want to offer an update what we're looking at? Uh, I mean, that statement is correct. We will be updating parents soon, and I'll be working with our treasurer's office to uh, refund any payments that have been made to uh, last year's sixth grade families. Um, I believe, I hope I'm not um, uh, putting my foot in my mouth here, but I believe we will look at the feasibility of having this year's seventh grade attend in the spring um, as well as the normal sixth grade. And um, and again, this is wishful thinking that by um, by May that um, we would be able to um, hold a, you know, a typical sixth grade camp and uh, allow the seventh graders to have that milestone experience that they missed this past year. Um, and similarly, though it wasn't asked, um, we will look to do the same for the what would have been an eighth grade Washington DC trip. But again, we're just we're going to have to delay and watch and see um, what's happening. But again, we we are hoping we can make up for missed uh, milestones in our students um, uh, our students' years. So uh, we're gonna we'll get creative this spring, and um, hopefully things will be in 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 shape that we that we'll be able to. Okay, the next is another link for as a resource. Okay, will the hybrid option students? Um, so this would be our our in person students only have in person classes and not any online classes when we <laughs> when we return to uh, to the actual hybrid of in-person learning. So uh, 
I guess, Tony or Paul, can you speak a little bit to what um, a typical schedule looks like without the uh, five, six, six, seven, you know, nine, four, just what is the, uh, what does a kid's day look like in terms of how much time in person and what might happen online does, and does online mean signing in with the teacher or does it just mean there's online content for them after the in-person time? At the, at the middle school, uh, students in the in-person schedule, I mean, the, all of their classes will happen here at Beachwood Middle School, um, in addition to the supplemental assignments or activities that they might engage when they're at home. Um, if the question is, will any of their classes occur online, um, the, the typical answer that I would offer is no. Um, of course, is with, with lots of things, there, there are exceptions. Uh, out of 350 students that we created schedules for here at the middle school, we encountered two students that had a potential schedule conflict, and we reached out to those families if that did apply to them to say, um, we can make this work if you would like to say, take orchestra in person when we are in the building during this period, and then say for a group one student in the afternoon when you're at home, if you want this other class, we're, we're giving you the opportunity to take that class albeit it would be online. So again, those were just two instances where we couldn't make an entirely in-person schedule work for our hybrid students. Uh, Mr. Chase, anything else that, to add um, or essentially the same? It was exactly the same. Okay. Um, is there a chess club option available? And I assume this is a question uh, geared about the, for the high school. I don't think we have chess club right now at the high school, correct? No, uh, Linda, you want to answer this? We, we have in the past, correct, yeah. Linda? Yeah, we actually used to have it, and it would meet at the middle school. Uh, right now, we have not contracted with Progress with, progress with Chess for this school year. We're waiting to see how things um, turn out before we bring in an outside company into the schools. Um, okay, Mr. DeWine's announcement was only the illusion of new information. What was true last week is true this week. Districts make decisions based on local circumstances and their best judgment. Agreed. <laughs> and that's what we'll do. Um, okay, do the students have to keep their camera on the entire time during, during the meet sessions? Uh, any principals want to jump in and answer that? Uh I'll jump in. So um, this was a discussion. The high school is going to um, make the uh, attempt to, to ask students to have their cameras on during the meets because just like if you were um, in session, you know, having uh, eye contact and looking up and um, being able to see if a student's engaged is important. Um, there will be situations where teachers may come back and make case-by-case -case decisions that that's not necessary. But the majority of teachers would like to start off at the high school with um, making sure students stay engaged and that they can see what they're doing um, during that 40 minute session they're in and uh, to make sure just like if you're calling somebody in a live classroom that um, they're engaged and ready to answer the question. Okay, uh, any, anyone else or essentially the same teachers feel the same way? Yes. Okay. Uh, Though the answers aren't always what I would want, I appreciate that you are having these meetings and taking the time to answer our questions. Uh, thank you, Ms. Brown. Can we all agree that next week will be lenient on all sides since this will take some time to sort out? No penalties for late homework. Laugh out loud. I also want to uh, have that disclaimer for our deliveries tomorrow and Thursday, uh, Thursday and Friday. We're going to try our best. We have 1,500 bags, over 1,500 bags to deliver in two days. So um, please be lenient. If you don't get your bag, we will get it to you. We, I promise I just might take a little longer. And much like much of the work that we stressed this week with our staff has, has focused on the need to ease into and establish relationships and not take our curriculum and our need to, um, you know, address the standards as seriously as our, our teachers normally would. You know, they take their work very seriously um, as we want them to, but um, we've also stressed the fact that we want our students to feel welcome back. We want them to feel 
like we understand them and how they feel. And um, I think our teachers have gotten that message. Um, we've stressed it a lot this week. They've discussed it. And I, th I, I know the principals are ready to probably jump in and talk about how they've talked about it with their, their teams already. Yeah, I was going to say too, um, we will make sure that there's a lot of leeway the first several days. Um, just like Linda said, uh, the disclaimer is, you know, we're going to have issues on day one or two and like always we will fix them and um, just asking for a little bit of patience, um, emailing the guidance counselors, the teachers, myself, Mr. Patty. Um, if there's an issue with logging into a class, no one is going to be penalized the first week. Uh, we'll work through each individual situation. It will not be a problem. And certainly at the younger grades, we are just really excited to be back with the children and have everybody spend some time together and rebuilding and reestablishing relationships, starting routines, getting used to being on a school schedule. So as um, we had one of our open houses this evening and we had shared with parents, you know, give us a little time too so that we can get everybody back where they need to be. And we're just, for us, the focus is on the kids. We're so excited to be with them. And that's what our focus is for the first couple of weeks and relationship building. So we appreciate parents, your patience with us. And we just, our main focus is the kids right now and just being together. Our teachers have been working all summer at all building levels and they're really ready as well to get going. We're ready for the school year. I would only add, and I, I'm sorry if I sound like the contrarian here, um, at the middle school, a uh, very student specific. So we will craft a plan uh, that supports each individual student. Um, and I say that because I, I can harken back to examples from the spring where, where families often relied on, say, a grade as a motivator or the extrinsic motivation to keep their kids on task. Um, so if that's the case in your household, absolutely. We, we won't take our foot off the gas, but we want to make the learning experience um, as supportive as possible for our students in both regards to their academics, but also mental health. Okay, next. Uh, thank you for, so much for the efficient organization. I'm really appreciative and indebted to everyone for making the transition um, of online school so smooth despite these trying times. Looking forward to the first day. So are we. And uh, uh, Mr. Posa agrees. All right, one, uh, one last question. Uh, sorry, that's what it says, one last question. I'm not saying one last question. If kids are missing from their classes, can kids be contacted by their teachers? Uh, so I'll take this one. Um, there's attendance in every single period, whether you're logging in in the morning to first period or logging into the afternoon to first period or all the periods. And uh, attendance phone calls will go out just like they do if you were in person. Um, I wanted to take a moment uh, to ask uh, Mr. Houchins to um, offer uh, offer his perspective a little bit on, um, I guess, following up on this idea that our staff have been encouraged, as um, as Lauren Broderick mentioned a, a little while, a moment ago, just they've been, they've been encouraged to pay a lot of attention um, to building community in their classroom, making sure students feel a connection with them, especially given that um, uh, these uh, we're starting a year. For many students, their teachers are all brand new, and um, and they're starting online. And that is, uh, there's always a you know a disconnect when connected virtually. Um, in addition, we we are not naive. We are coming back in a very uh, divisive election season. Um, we've had um, you know protests across our country around racial violence, uh, and and in our own community. Um, there, um, there have been incidents over the last several months that, um, that many of our students, even very young students are talking about, um, that are, uh, they're, they're troubling and they, um, and they echo or they parallel, uh, our national issues as well. So, um, our, our staff are aware that our kids are coming back, whether it's remote, um, or in person or and in person with all of that. And so, um, um, this was something stressed by Mr. Houchins today and will continue to be, and I, I wanted him to share that with all of you. Yes, thanks, Bob. So, honestly, this whole day was about, um, and actually the rest of the week, and, and it will continue on throughout our year, uh, will be about making sure that uh, everyone feels respected and heard. Uh, and part of that is that it's about gaining understanding about others. 
uh, as one of the things we're really talking about is when either it be our teachers or our students that uh, they build a relationship uh, that's built on cultural humility in which each person that comes to the conversations come with the humility that they are the author of their own story, but the person that they may be engaging with has their story too. Um, and as we work with each other, uh, we understand that both the teachers and the students will be lifelong learners about learning about each other. Um, and we'll have some basic concepts in terms of and guidelines. Uh, today, we even had our, uh, our uh, the, the attorney for our district come in and talk about you know the First Amendment and uh, where we stand as a district as far as what our uh, political speech and different things should be. Uh, in addition, uh, we've been just working about talking about when you ask a question, the killer ask a question kindly. Um, just ask, you know, and try to learn and get understanding as opposed to being having judgment uh, and and you know trying to make your point and only thinking about things being one way. Uh, there are a lot of you know to be honest with you, one of the things that's really exciting and one of the things we're hoping to take better advantage of is Beachwood is an international school. And what better way would you want to educate your kid than to get information from all the different perspectives of the different students and teachers um, and families in our district? Thank you very much. The um, and and I guess uh, we just put the put the request out um, to all of you as parents. Encourage those same um, behaviors, values, uh, and hopefully habits. Uh, in your kids as they come back to school, as they're interacting online, um, we 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 need your help, um, and, and especially in these times. And um, and we assure you, we're going to do our part. Um, when we're at work, uh, we're we're public servants, and we're there to um, to encourage that all students use their voice, uh, be heard, uh, but that they're not drowning out others, and that we don't drown out them. And um, that can be a hard uh, balance beam to walk, but that's our job. Uh, and as Mr. Houchins noted, our school attorney um, was very clear about that with all of us today, um, uh, that this is our role as, as, um, as your public school employees. So um, uh, it's, it's going to be interesting. Um, hopefully, um, uh, it'll be at times spirited. But what we hope it is not is nasty, divisive, and um, in, in any way shutting down of our students' um, uh, strongly held beliefs. And um, we, we, we want them all to feel that they have a voice and that we encourage it. Um, and that sometimes it's okay to be uncomfortable, but as uh, Mr. Hapchin said, always um, uh, with respect for our um, all members of our community. So um, so thanks, we're gonna work on it and we, we need your help, so help us out. Okay, a lot of thank yous, we thank you. Uh, we know you're going through a lot uh, as well with a lot of uncertainty, so thank you for trusting us. Um, will the time that students are logged in every day be monitored? Um, I'm gonna, so attendance is one thing, which I think you heard an answer about. Yes, attendance is taken. And um, Ken Vian, maybe you could speak a little bit about is there, uh, Beyond maybe just monitoring um, login time, uh, maybe you could speak a little bit about how our GoGuardian software works and its capabilities to kind of help our teachers. Uh, so teachers will have access to um, basically um, what students are looking at. Um, they'll be able to free screens. They'll be able to, uh, you know, lock screens, I guess they call it, um, where, you know, attention needs to be on me as the educator. Um, and so they're not looking at other tabs and things like that. Um, so, so GoGuardian for the teachers allows them to do some of those things. Um, they can push out websites, tabs that they want students to be on. Um, and in addition, um, we have GoGuardian monitoring software. And so that'll, that'll allow us, uh, teachers don't really monitor the um, students, but um, we have alerts that if they're looking up uh, you know, pornography or um, information about suicide, uh, it alerts us right away. And so then we can contact parents and let them know. Um, you know, the suicide prevention piece is uh, immediate. Um, the pornography and things like that, it alerts us through an email. Uh, we may not get that right away, um, but we have it set up where we get texts for suicide prevention. So um, that's part of the GoGuardian uh, uh, filtering. 
um, software. In in addition, it does uh, filter, and so it does keep them off. But um, as you know, uh, the, with every great filter, there's still a way around it uh, here and there, um, and students are good. So, um, uh, so that's that's part of what we have for GoGuardian. Thank you. Okay, we have an advertisement for an excellent uh, chess coach dad in Beechwood. And it uh, looks like you have a first customer in our chat session. So <laughs> we want royalties or no, uh, uh, what's it called? A, a referral fee for that. Um, and some other thank yous. Again, we thank you. From, um, uh, from what information that I have had from uh, friends in other districts, Beechwood has been very proactive and on top of things. Um, it's, it's reassuring uh, given the pandemic. Thank you. Um, okay, can we keep having these check-in meetings throughout the year? Um, and yes, uh, yes, we can. Um, and hopefully we can have some in person at some point. That would be nice. And then um, uh, let me throw this out to, to all of the administrators um, uh, or board members on the call. What in a concrete sense can we do as parents to help? I was in a couple different teacher meetings uh, this week, and one of the things that the teachers uh, had suggested would be very helpful is if you have a learning space set up for your child when they are remote learning. So not just on the couch or in, in a casual space, but if you can set up a, a table and a desk and when you're logged into school, this is where your workspace is. That's something simple that families can do and kind of set an academic tone or environment for your children at home. Uh, I'd like to add, um, I agree with Linda 120%. Um, my wife was just out in the garage. She pur purchased a um, desk off the mommy swap site and um, she, she's sanding it down right now and we're, we're, we're painting it uh, white to match, match the furniture and it's, it's a new learning space for my son um, and we're doing the same thing for our daughter. So we're creating separate learning spaces, sort of mimicking what school would be. Um, so it's ironic, Linda, you said that because that's what the Chase family is doing this evening. So You make your kids log in in the garage? <laughs> the desk is going into his room. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, did anyone else want to comment on uh, ways parents can help their kids? Uh, um, just, I think this is sort of obvious, but it's it's hard to do. But if and, and it may be unique and individual in each um, family. But you know, we we do stress routines, routines that work with your family. We know that in school, um, that's easier for us. You know, there's there's natural routines within the school, the kind of bell systems and all of that, that may not happen. Um, we certainly don't think that parents will be switching music on, you know, as we have at the middle school school for class changes, that kinds of things, you know. But um, but just the routines that you have, if you if you can establish them, um, are helpful for students. Um, it's reassuring for them. You would have heard from our counselors as they reached out to families back in the spring that. Um, that it, it, it's it's reassuring to the children. They may push back some, um, even we as adults do sometimes. Um, it may not be our natural nature at all, you know, to have someone else, um, but, you know, instilling those on us, but they also look to us as adults for that routine. So it's even good for their mental health as well. They know then you, you know, they feel really, really, really reassured by that. So that's something you can do as parents within, you know, your ability and your own family structure. And I think as we ease into the new structure, as Lauren's referring to of school, be good to yourselves with patience as well. We're all going to be transitioning together. It's been a different schedule for all of us for many months. So please also just consider that we are in this together. You'll be hearing lots of more information from your teachers this week and next. And we are going to just get back into it together. And as Linda said, it's a wonderful idea to have a specific place for your children to start developing those study habits and that organization so that they have a place for everything and can be organized. Our kindergarten team 
we're going to be sharing a box with every kindergarten family that will help you set up a learning space. And that will um, be shared with you at Open House and how we will get those to you. So we're excited about that and starting early with good routines and schedules. I would just like to add also that what you can do to help us and help yourselves too is if you have any questions or have any concerns that you do keep in contact with your teachers, yeah. your yeah. principals, other administrators and the board and or the board for, for questions because just a reminder that what you read on social media uh, may not be the real the answer of what's really going on or what the real what the real situation is so if you have a concern or question feel free to keep in contact with us even if it's not the time one of these question and answer meetings that's what we're here for and uh, we just want everybody to be comfortable um and stay healthy and be successful throughout this year from the middle school i would just like to add that our first edition of our counseling corner uh, will be pushed out next yeah. thursday and the topic for our first edition will be supporting our students uh, uh, with this transition. From a practical standpoint, um, I would be encouraging my middle school student, if I had one, um, to get back into the routine of waking up. Um, I know that most of our 13 year olds don't, don't uh, aren't, well, let's just say, last names A through L, we will see you in class at 8.05 on Monday. <laughs> and if uh, they haven't transitioned back to that routine, uh, now might be a good time to start setting those alarm clocks. Mm -hmm. um, and, and speaking of waking up um, or, or logging in on time, the last uh, right now, the last question was um, when, when the question uh, earlier was about login time, it was meant as a question about um, students uh, punctuality um, for arriving uh, in law or and or logging in for each class. If I'm not mistaken, uh, and just principals correct me if I'm wrong, attendance will be taken at the start of class. And so if a student is not, um, is, is consistently arriving late to class or, and for sure, if they're not there at all, uh, parents will be notified. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so yes, we will expect students to log in on time. Um, this, this year's schedule is very different than um, what we were doing in the spring where there were many more optional uh, logins and um, kind of uh, different ways to interact directly with teachers, but that, that didn't necessarily have a specific start time. Um, this, is, this year is very different. We're trying to build a very uh, consistency and routine. Okay, so at this point, uh, there are 51 brave souls still on the Google Meet. There are no more chat uh, questions or comments. So uh, we will just conclude by saying thank you all very much. We are looking forward, um, as you are, uh, to Monday and seeing all your kids, albeit online. We uh, will schedule more of these community conversations. Uh, they'll be via Google Meet um, for, I'm sure, a good long time at this point, several weeks at minimum. And um, hello, children. I see you on the screen. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you soon. Uh, thank you all very much, and um, have a great night. Thank you.